In this and the next lecture, you will learn how to configure the spring lifecycle methods, that is the init and destroy methods using XML configuration. You will do that in three simple steps which you already know. You will create a spring bean called patient. You will use the XML configuration to configure the init and destroy methods. And finally, you will write a test. Let's get started. Go to Eclipse, new class, call it patient package com dot bharat dot under spring core let's create a package called lc for lifecycle dot xml config we are going to implement lifecycle using xml config finish double click to maximize this patient will have only one field int id a patient id make it private control one create getter and setter methods Next is to create the configuration. So you can grab the configuration from ref types. Config.xml, come back, paste it, open it, clean up all the beans, and start using the bean tag to instantiate or create an object of type bean class is equal to patient. We'll grab the package name in a second. Go to patient, copy the package name, come back paste it dot give it a name name is equal to em patient let's call it patient use the p schema p colon the name of the field is id id is equal to assign a number let's say one two three close the element right there so so far we have instantiated the bean and done the injection of one and only one field we haven't used the init and destroy methods yet. To use the init and destroy, we need to go back to patient, create a init method. It should start with public. The return type should be void. The name of the method need not be init. It can be anything. Let's say hi. No parameters within the body. Add a sysout. Inside hi method. So this is our init method. It's going to act as our init method. Also code the destroy method, public, void, no return type. Instead of destroy, I'm going to call it by. The name can be anything, no parameters. Sys out inside by method. Save it. So we have two methods which will act as init and destroy. Now we need to configure them in the config.xml. Go back to the bean element. To configure the init method, we use an attribute called init hyphen method is equal to within double quotes, we need to provide the name of the method, just the name which is hi. And for destroy, as you can guess, destroy hyphen method is equal to within double quotes by. Save it and that's it. We can create our test class can grab the test class from the ref types copy that paste it here open it we need to change the packages the class names etc instead of student it will be patient that's the bean that's going to come out of spring container change this name to patient as well instead of ref types it's spring core colon or forward slash rc slash xml config that is the package name and then the config.xml Change this name to patient. The variable name should be patient. We haven't implemented the two string method on patient. We can do that. Go to patient, go to source, generate two string. Go back to source. I just need the two string method. Click OK. Control Shift F to format. Let's run our test. So successfully you have configured the init and destroy methods which are high and by. Let's run the test and see the output. Run as Java application. There is an exception. Let's see what it is. It could not find the config.xml com bharat spring spring core rc 
XML config. Let's check the package if it's correct. It's LC, not RC. So go back to the test and change it from RC to LC for life cycle. Run the test again. And this time you will see that it says inside high and then it prints the patient object. So before the object itself is injected, the, the as soon as the object is created and once the setter methods are invoked, the init method is invoked. So to prove that this high method is being invoked after the setter methods are called, go to patient and inside the setter method for ID right here, add a sysout, sysout inside the setter method. Save it, come back, run the test again. So Spring creates the object, calls the setter methods and then it invokes the init method and then it creates the rest of the object. But one thing you notice is that our destroy method is not invoked yet. This here inside by method is not being printed. There is a reason for it. We need to enable something in Spring. We need to enable a hook in Spring for the destroy method to be invoked. We will see that in the next lecture. So to summarize, you have done a lot in this lecture. You have created a patient object. You have uh, created a couple of methods which will act as init and destroy. And in the config.xml, when you create that bean using the bean element, you have also configured the init and destroy methods using init method and destroy method attributes. You have successfully created a test and seen it all in action except for the destroy not being called, which you will fix in the next lecture.